Greetings viewers at home. I hope all of you are well and safe. Um, I'm Mr. Twala from Tibet College. So I'm going to present a lesson in financial accounting and N6. So our topic is gonna be a cash flow statement. But in the cash flow statement, I'm not going to present everything but there will be a section that i want you to pay more attention at so the question it might be say which section so don't worry through our presentation you will figure it out okay uh the lesson objective after this presentation you should be able to explain the aim of the cash flow statement name the users of the cash flow statement Describe and explain the three categories of the cash flow statement. Remember what I said? I said we are not going to present everything in the cash flow statement, but I'm looking at a certain section. So the section is within the three categories. Um, explain the non-cash flow items. Compile a cash flow statement, the conceptual framework. The conceptual framework is very much important. You cannot compile a cash flow statement if you don't know the conceptual framework. How does the cash flow statement look like? The ways that you need to use in the cash flow statement, we call it a conceptual framework. Then now let's look at the aims of the cash flow statement. Uh, what are the aims? Is to identify or is to indicate how the cash flow of the business was controlled in the past. Meaning that you need to have the two consecutive year for a statement of financial of your entity. Let's say 2017 financial statement against 2019 financial statement to compare and check the, how does the business was controlling their money. Uh, the next aim is to show how the future cash flow of the entity are look like, which means you can predict how the company can make money or increase their capital contribution. Okay, the next aim is to identify how much cash the entity operates for the company generates. Uh, the next aim help to identify a company's ability to generate cash and a profit in the near future. Uh, the last is, the, is to identify how much cash the entity invested in the non-current assets. So our lesson will pay more attention under this, this section, investment or investing activity, and it's fall under non-current assets. Now, the users of the cash flow statement. Who are the users of the cash flow statement? The owners, the directors, the shareholders. Why? Because they want to know about the status, the cash status of the business. What is the cash status of the entity? Then the investors. Why the investors want to use the cash flow statement? It's because they want to know the future cash flow of the entity. What will, will the entity future cash flow be? The suppliers, does the entity generate enough cash to pay their suppliers on time? Customers, why customers, they want the cash, the cash flow statement of your entity? It's because they want to know in the near future whether they're still going to buy goods in your company or not. Competitors, why? How does the cash flow of this entity compare with ours? Then the last is the employees. They also want to know whether they will receive salaries or wages at the end of the month. Then, um, our next slide is to describe and explain the three categories of the cash flow statement. 
then we have the categories, the uh, categories of cash flow statement activities, which is the operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. As I said initially, that uh, our lesson focuses in this section, investing activity. So we break down this section. Investing activities, the net cash inflow and outflow. So it comprises of the purchases of fixed assets outflow. What is the meaning of this? Purchases of fixed assets outflow. Meaning if you purchase, if you buy something from your entity, if you take out the money from the company, it's an outflow to buy something, to buy an asset, for an example, very highly. That's very highly, it's going to be added, but certain amount will be deducted from your company. That is why we have what? Outflow. Then uh, proceed from the sales of fixed assets in flow. Uh, you may decide that no man, you don't need this asset anymore, then you want to sell. So when you are busy doing the sales process, you will receive money after the sale. Then we have inflow. Why is an inflow? Because you will sell some of your assets during the accounting period and you will receive money from the sale of an asset. It's an inflow then the money will be deposited direct into the entity bank account. Then investment made. Uh, you have money in your business, but you don't need this money now. Instead of keeping this money in your business, it's much better to invest it. So it's in outflow. Why? Because you will take out money from the bank account of your entity then is an outflow of cash. Then the last is investment matured. So now, remember we have made what investment for a certain period of time. Then the time for the investment lapse or its end, then the money will come back to our business. Then we call it an inflow of cash. The money will be deposited directly into the business or bank account of our business. Right uh, now, let's ex go back, I mean, break down the non-cash flow item. Depreciation. Why depreciation is important? Remember, we use what the assets. We purchase very highly to deliver stock to our customer. By using the very highly every day, the very highly lose it, the value. So you need to calculate what the depreciation. So that when you sell this very highly, you will sell it at the net carrying value. The net carrying value will come from the original cost minus depreciation. It's equal to the net carrying value of the assets. Loss or profit on sale of the fixed assets. Now, you can sell the assets. You can either make a loss or a profit. But we'll do an activity to see how this profit or loss can come when it comes to uh, sales of and fixed assets. Uh, Revaluation of a fixed assets. We have a land. After a certain period, we need to revaluate the value of the land. So it is very much important to check the value of the land after a certain period of time. Okay. We have a conceptual framework of the cash flow statement. In order to complete a cash flow statement, you need to master this concept, the frame. If I said conceptual framework, I'm referring to the this frame. The concept, cash flow from operating activity, cash flow from generating interest received, the cash flow from investing activity. Our lesson will pay more attention in this section. Cash flow from investing activity. 
So now let's move to the next slide. We have example. Uh, as an N6 financial accounting student, you are required to prepare the investment activity section of the cash flow of Wheatbank LTT for the year ended 31st December 2017. 31st December 2017. So, it is very much important to know what is required from you before you can start answering any question. Because you may think that you know a cash flow statement. Yes, you know the cash flow statement. But in this case, we want this section only, the investing activity. So now, how are you going to answer the question? All right, you go to the additional information. This is the additional information. We will give you this part and this part. And remember what I said, I said in order to do a cash flow statement, you need the financial statement of the business for two consecutive years. This is 2016 and this is 2017. So I have the information. What is required from me is to prepare the activity, the investment, the investing activity part. All right, um, how to prepare this? We go to additional information. All right, I have uh, additional information says included in other expenses are depreciation, equipment is 60,000, very highly, it's 9,000, loss on disposal of very highly as 2,000, equipment which was original purchased for 100,000 with a net book value of 60,000 was sold during the year. New equipment was purchased to replace the equipment sold. So you need to calculate the amount for the equipment that was sold during the accounting period because it's not given here. So remember, I said prepare the investing activity. It's like I'm saying to you, produce a chocolate. In order to produce what? A chocolate, you need to do what? To go back and prepare, put your ingredients. I don't need the ingredients. I want what? The chocolate. So now let's break down how to prepare the investing activity. You need to open what? A ledger account. This is the ledger account. Under non-current assets, I have equipment and vehicle. I have to calculate this equipment, accumulated depression for equipment, asset disposal, vehicle, accumulated depreciation for the vehicle, then asset disposal. We are taking out these assets. Let's read the information about the equipment. The equipment depreciation is 60,000. And according to the statement of financial position, the statement of financial position is given. Statement of financial position for equipment, the cost price of equipment. The cost price of equipment, it's 100, now it's, two, it's 200,000 in 2016. Then remember equipment is an asset, asset increases on the debit side, which means I have what? An opening balance on the debit side. How much is 200,000? 200,000. These are the ingredients in order to answer what? The question. I don't want the ingredient, I want you to answer the question. Then, the closing balance is given 480,000. 480,000. We close off because the closing balance is given. We transfer it here. Remember the double entry system. 
transfer here. Then let's all continue with our accumulated depreciation. The opening balance for accumulated depreciation is given. Remember, depreciation is an expense. And expenses increase which side? On the debit side. Which means our accumulated depreciation opening balance is going to be recorded on the credit side. Opening balance. How much? It's given. 60,000. Then the closing balance is given. It's going to be a carried down here on the debit side. It's 80,000. Then I close off. Then the balance brought forward is 80,000. Still reading the information about equipment. Under additional information, we said depreciation equipment is 60,000. I have the equipment depreciation here. Depreciation, it's 60,000. Under additional information, this one, remember, it's coming from the statement of comprehensive income. 60,000. Uh, adjustment number two, read as for them. Equipment which was original purchased for 100,000 with a net book value of 60,000 was sold during the year. New equipment was purchased to replace the equipment sold. Meaning here, we need to replace a certain equipment and we are taking out this one. Asset disposal, we are taking out this equipment. How much? 100,000. Under equipment, I have asset disposal, which means my asset disposal account is affected with an equipment. Which side, double entry system, I have credited asset disposal under equipment, which means under asset disposal, I have to debit equipment. Equipment, how much? It's 100,000. Then, how much is the accumulated depreciation for the equipment sold during the accounting period? It's not given. You have to calculate it. The original cost, it was 100,000. The book value, it's 60,000. Then 100,000 minus 60,000, it's equals to 40,000. Which means the accumulated depreciation for the equipment sold during the accounting, it's 40,000. Accumulated depreciation for the assets, it's 40,000. The asset that we have sold during the accounting period, it's 40,000. Then my accumulated depreciation, it's affected with an asset disposal on the debit side, which means now my asset disposal on the credit side, it's going to be affected with a depreciation. Depreciation, how much? 40,000. Then adjustment number three. The capacity of the plant was expanded through the purchase of new equipment to the value of 200,000. Now, assets, it's going to be affected. Here we are adding what a new equipment and equipment is an asset. Assets increase on the debit side. Then I record the addition here. 200,000. Remember they said for the sold of these assets, we have the, this, a new equipment that was acquired to replace this one and we don't know how much. That is why it's blank here. Then we have profit on disposal of equipment. The profit is given from the statement of comprehensive income, profit on, sold, uh, profit on sale of an equipment here, it's 10,000. Then you record it under disposal, asset disposal. Profit which for, for disposing these assets, for selling these assets, we have made a profit. Profit is an income, income increases on the credit side which means the asset disposal is going to be debited with a profit. How much is the profit? It's 10,000. It's given. 
10,000. So I have all the ingredients that affect the equipment. Now I'm mixing it. And remember, if you do this thing right, you can even test your ingredients. How to test it? This one of the three accounts must balance before you can record it here. Okay, let's add all the figures together. 480 plus 100 is equal to 580,000. Minus 200 and against 200, it's going to be 180,000. So now I have 180,000 here. Case law from investing activity. I have what? Replacement of equipment. 180,000. I have additional of equipment is 200,000. Then now, proceed on sale of an asset. What is a proceed on sale of assets? The amount that you will receive after the sale of an asset. How much? You have to calculate it. Let's close off the asset disposal account. 100 plus 100, 100 plus 10,000, it's close to 110,000. 110,000. 110,000 minus 40,000, 40,000 is close to 70,000. Then you will receive this amount. This amount is going to be credited in your bank account. Then you have what? Proceeds on sale of equipment. How much? 70,000. Then let's move to the next part, the Haiki. Let's read information about the Haiki. We have an opening balance taken from the statement of financial position. The opening balance here for the Haiki is 112,000. Then they, they carry down it's 124,000. Opening balance for depreciation it's 60,000. Carry down it's 64,000. Close off, close off the account. Close this one as well off. Then this is going to be a pro down here, 124,000. This is going to be a pro down here, 60,000. Then let's read information that affect our vehicle. Uh, we have depreciation vehicle 9,000. Depreciation vehicle, uh, it's 9,000. Depreciation 9,000. Then uh, loss on disposal of vehicle 2,000. Loss is an expense, expense increase on the debit side, which means our asset disposal is going to be debited, uh, it's going to be credited with a loss. How much is the loss? 200, I mean 2,000. Uh, a vehicle which cost of 20,000 with a net book value of 6,000 was sold during the year. A new vehicle was purchased to replace the vehicle disposed of. So now we are taking out this vehicle asset disposal, 20,000. Our asset disposal account is going to be affected with a vehicle, 20,000. Uh, the depreciation for the assets sold during the accounting period is not given. Then you need to calculate the depreciation for this vehicle. 20 minus 6,000 is going to be uh, 14,000. 14, Accumulated depreciation for the vehicle sold during the accounting period is 14,000, which means our asset disposal now is affected with a depreciation 14,000. A vehicle was purchased to replace the vehicle disposed of, which means now we have to calculate what a replacement. Let's add together here uh, 124,000 plus 20,000 is equal to 144,000. 144,000. 134,000 minus 112,000 is equal to 38,000, if I'm not mistaken. 38,000. So now I have, okay, let's complete this one uh, to prove whether this amount is wrong, all right? Let's add this one. This uh, 64,000 plus 14,000 is equals to 78,000. Uh, this is going to be 69,000, okay? Which means our depreciation here, it's wrong. 
you need to add another 9,000. But let's prove this one. Remember I said, okay, I said you can test this if it's correct or right. Then this plus this is equals to 120,000. 60,000 plus 60,000 is equals to 120,000, which means this is 100% correct. So now you move to what is required. Remember I said I don't want this, but I want you to prepare what the cash flow from investing activity. Now I have calculated this. I have what the replacement for the high key. How much is the replacement for the high key? 38,000. I have what? The, oh, let's calculate the, the proceed here. 20,000 minus 2,000 minus 14,000 is going to be 4,000. Then the proceed. Proceed on sale of the high key. It's four thousand. Then uh, the last part is the investment. Uh, investment for two thousand and sixteen it was zero. Two thousand and two thousand and. investment it's zero here then hundred thousand which means we have taken out a certain of amount then it's an outflow of cash then pro seed on investment it's hundred thousand this is an outflow this is an outflow outflow then the proceed is an inflow then this one is an outflow then let's check our solution this is our solution. This is how your cash flow is supposed to look like. Remember, I said prepare what the cash flow statement, the investing activity. I don't want this thing, but you must prepare it in order to give me what I want. Um, if you have any question, remember to visit our social network. The Facebook, the Twitters, and other social network. I know that you are familiar with this part. Um, it is the end of our lesson. So for the next lesson, I think we will come, uh, we will break down the other activity, the financing activity, and the, and the, what is the other act, uh, activity? Is the the operating activity. So stay safe. We miss your face, students. I hope after this COVID-19 will come back. <laughs>